Another way to make a, a shape is to use an Illustrator file. Here's an Illustrator file of this fish. Not sure why you can't see it. There it is. It finally showed up. Drag it down here to the comp. A little bit large. There you go. Get the selection tool here and move it around a little bit so it's not so large. Come on. There we go. And we'll scale it down a bit. Press S for scale. There we go. So this is now an Illustrator file. But, um, wow, this guy's not being a little very cooperative. There we go. It's an Illustrator file um, in which you can manipulate, but it just, you know, the things you, that you can manipulate typically are just the transform properties, you know, position, scale, rotation, that kind of stuff. And you can apply effects to it just as any other layer would work, any other asset in a, in a comp. But I want to convert this to a, to a shape. So I right-click on it. And there's a thing called Create Shapes from Vector Layers. Uh, Illustrator files a vector file such that if you make it smaller or larger, it retains its quality because it's defined by vectors, by math. So convert it now to a shape. And now it's converted to a shape. Well, the lines there are just the various uh, uh, paths. I can click that off by clicking this guy there so you don't see it anymore. It looks exactly the same. It took the original Illustrator file and turned it off. And now this thing is a shape. And if you open it up, it has a lot of groups. Each one of these groups is one of those paths in the Illustrator file, which is a little much, right? You probably wouldn't want to work with all of them. For example, I know that 18 here is the body. So if I open that up, I can work with that particular one if I wanted to. I can go to Transform here for that one, and I could skew it, for example. Not that I would necessarily want to do that. Or I could go, let's say, to the eyes, which are groups 1, 2, and 3. And I could, I could manipulate them all. I could have them all, let's say, get larger suddenly or smaller. So you can manipulate them now individually like that, which you couldn't do if this were just an Illustrator file sitting inside uh, After Effects. But the thing that's kind of cool about this is that you can, you can work on these attributes. So one of them is Repeater, for example. It allows you to repeat things and have them go off into the distance that, that you can do only with shapes. So Illustrator... This Illustrator file, I could take any shape I want and do the same thing to it that I'm going to do to this guy, but I just want you to see how this works with this particular one. So this is the one that I converted, that I converted an Illustrator file to uh, a shape file, or a shape layer. So if you click on this, go to Contents, all these various groups and things, but at the bottom here is something called Repeater. I'm going to delete that now, just and add that in a second. The way you can add an attribute to a shape layer is by going to add, and these are some attributes you can add. You can, you can add another fill if you want to. You can add another uh, uh, shape. But what's interesting are these guys down here. Now we did the merge paths already, and we're going to talk about these things here. If I add, let's say, repeater, and you look at repeater, repeater has copies. Right now there are three. You can see them. But it has some other attributes too. It has transform. So it allows you to say, what will this thing eventually get to as we repeat it? I can say, I don't want it to be the same size. I want it to get smaller. And I want to change the anchor point in terms of where it shows up. Off in the distance like that. And I want to have more than just three. And let's see. Let's maybe put them a little closer together. More copies. And I can change how they wrap over time. I can rotate them as objects as they, as they peel away. Okay. I can change what the first one is by changing the offset. So I go like, if I change the offset, I went too far, you lost. If I change the offset, it means that I can have things start in the middle instead of at the very, as the first thing. Change the offset. So I can animate all these things. I can animate repeater, which is really cool. That's one cool thing. I'll delete that. Another cool thing to add is called uh, Pucker and Bloat. There it is. Right off the bat, it starts doing weird things to your poor fish. How much you pucker and bloat it. And it's doing it just that bottom layer. If I make a group, I'm going to delete that. I can take all those loops, and, all those guys and put them together. But they can add, and I think this will do it. I'm not sure if it's necessary, but we'll find out. Add group. Click on all these guys, shift click on the first and last, and drag them all into this group 38. And group 38, I'm going to click on that 
press the enter key and call that all, uh, all paths. And now with that one active, I'm not sure this is going to work. We'll try this out. All paths, go to add, fucker and bloat. Yeah, and that does it for the whole thing rather than just the one guy there. There you go. Uh, still looks similar. Okay, I guess I didn't do the group. That was just an experiment there. Delete that. And let's see, go back to add, and we can do uh, twist, which you might, ex might, you might figure out what that's all about. And sort of like skew, but a little more involved. There you go. And I'll, I'll get rid of twist. And you can see how they add these guys, and you can, an you can animate all these features as well. And there are a couple other things here, wiggle, zigzag, which I think you can just zigzag, a wiggle causes things to kind of change over time. Uh, but you can try these guys out, but these are cool things that you can add to shapes to make them look interesting. Mm -hmm.